Is Linda there? Oh, is this Mrs. Taylor? Well, I'm Eddie Williams. Say, do you know where I can reach her? I've called three times and she hasn't been home. Central 6, 0842. I've got it. Thanks a lot, Miss Taylor. Bye-bye. So, Kathy, I told Mom, if he isn't going to tell her who he is, I'm certainly not going to wait for whoever he is to call again. Hello? Oh. Oh, hi, Linda. This is Eddie Williams. Boy, are you hard to get a hold of. Called you three times last week. I didn't know you were calling. You never left your name. Oh, I'm sorry. I wanted to know if you'd like to go out to dinner with me Saturday. Saturday? This Saturday? Well, yeah, that is if you're not busy. We could make it some other time. Oh, no, I'm not busy. I'd love to go. Swell. Pick you up about seven, then? I'll be ready. Fine. Goodbye. Bye. The service phone ad is working out three. Yes, sir. But I've never been out on a dinner date before. I'm just scared to death. Why? You know, check rooms and waitresses and ordering, and it's so complicated. I just know I'll do everything wrong. And Eddie will never ask me to go in. Silly. There's nothing to going out for dinner. Not for you. If I had an aunt who owned a food, I'd know how to act, too. Linda, the restaurant's closed on Mondays. I'll ask Aunt Kate over tonight, and we'll ask her about all these things that are bothering you. Besides, the folks are going out, so this will be sort of fun. But come on over after dinner. I'll get it. There's Linda now. She's really upset about it, Aunt Kate. That's why I asked you to bring menus. Jerry! Oh, hi, Linda. Well, for heaven's sake. You staying home for a change? Well, I'm always home. You know that. And I know why you're here. Big date coming up, huh? Hmm, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Well, Aunt Kate and Kathy are in the dining room. Aunt Kate, you remember my friend, Linda Taylor? Why, yes, how do you do, Linda? I'm happy to see you. Thank you, Mrs. Jefferson. It's nice to see you again. I understand you have a big date Saturday. Yes, I do. And Kathy tells me you're a little upset. Well... Oh, Linda, there's really no need to be upset over how you should act. May I ask you something? Sure, Mrs. Jefferson. Were you self-conscious when Jerry helped you with your coat? Golly, no. He always does, when he's here. And because you're comfortable with him, you're not self-conscious. Isn't that right? Well, it threw me the first time he did it. <gasps> really, Jerry. <laughs> Go on, Mrs. Jefferson. Well, there's the secret right there, Linda. The more often you do something, the easier it is. Now, what we're going to do is practice right here with you, Kathy, and Jerry. First, we'll set the table. I'll need your help, Kathy. You get the placemats. And Jerry, you get the menus. They're in the living room. Let's practice from the beginning now. This will be the hat check stand. You take over there, Kathy. And Linda, you and Jerry put your coats on and enter from the kitchen. The gentleman holds the door for the girl and lets her precede him into the restaurant. They both go to the hat check stand where it is proper, if the girl desires, for her to check her coat or she can keep her coat and drape it over her chair back after she is seated. You wait at the entrance of the dining room for the hostess to guide you to your table. The hostess goes first, then the girl, and the man follows. Usually the hostess will indicate the chair that provides the most desirable view for the girl. Sit down slowly to give your escort a chance to slip your chair up to the table. If you're still too far away from the table, rise slightly so we can push the chair closer. Don't just plop in the chair and expect him to lift you and the chair to the table. He may not be a weightlifter. 
A restaurant will provide more silver than you usually find on your dinner table at home. And it's placed so you more or less work from the outside in toward your plate as the courses are served. There is usually a soup spoon, a coffee spoon, and a dessert spoon. Then, a butter knife and knife to cut your meat. Now on the other side, you have your salad fork and your regular fork. Naturally, you will carry a small purse that rests easily in your lap because you never put your purse on the table. You immediately unfold your table napkin, not all the way, just halfway so the fold is toward you. Then look at the menu. You will have ample time to study the menu and you may ask about any dish that has a name you... Menus are nothing to be confused about once you become familiar with them. Notice that there are two price lists one for a la carte and one for table d'hote, which is the complete dinner. The left side items, which means you receive only the entree portion of the table d'hote. The entree is the main course, and a la carte includes only the main course, potatoes, salad, bread and butter, and sometimes a vegetable. If you order a la carte, the appetizer, coffee and dessert cost extra. The right side of the menu is for the table d'hote. This costs more, so you will usually find several appetizers listed to choose from. Some of them you drink. Others will be served with their own spoons or cocktail forks with which to eat them. If there is no price beside it, that means the appetizer is included with the price of the dinner, and you choose only one. If you choose one that has a price beside it, the cost of it will be added even to a complete dinner. After the appetizer, the waitress will bring soup. Soup de jour, translated literally, means soup of the day. And it's perfectly all right to ask, what is the soup de jour? You might not want to order soup if it's a kind you don't care for. After choosing your entree or meat course, you will have a choice of salad dressings. So make up your mind whether you want French, oil and vinegar, garlic or Roquefort. Avoid using a knife to cut your salad. It's preferable to use a fork. You also have a choice of vegetables. And you will be asked how you want your potatoes. Usually baked, whipped, French fried or cottage fried. You cut one bite-sized portion of meat and finish eating it before cutting more. If there is gravy left and you would like to eat it, you may do so by putting a small piece of bread down on the gravy and then eating it with your fork, as if it were any other helping on your plate. Most people prefer to wait and have coffee with their dessert. When you've stirred the sugar and cream into your coffee, be sure to put the spoon on the saucer. It's bad manners to leave your spoon in the cup. The same rule applies after you have finished your dessert. If it is the kind served in a sherbet dish, which has its own serving plate, like ice cream, fruit, or gelatin. Your escort will give your order to the waitress. And a well-trained waitress seldom, if ever, asks the girl a direct question. If she should, however, common courtesy demands that you answer her. Uh, you wanted oil and vinegar dressing on your salad? Yes. Our oil and vinegar has a little garlic in it. Will that be all right? Oh, well, I'll have the French dressing then. Two with French dressing. After the waitress takes your order, she leaves. In the meantime, you might like to have one of the rolls the waitress or busboy brought when you first sat down. Always break off a small portion of the roll. Butter and eat that before breaking off more. You never cut a roll with your knife. And if an accident occurs, it's not the end of the world. Anyone can have this happen. If you drop something, you just leave the item on the floor and let one of the restaurant employees pick it up later. In the meantime, your escort will wait until your waitress is within easy hearing distance to say... Waitress? Yes, sir? We dropped a fork here. Could we have another one, please? Of course, sir. At no time does he raise his voice nor tap a glass with silverware to attract her attention. If he can't locate the waitress, the hostess will notice and come to help. When you've finished your meal, you may blot your lips lightly with your napkin. Avoid staining the table napkin with lipstick.
Do not refold the napkin. Simply place it unfolded beside your plate. Although a minimum of makeup repair is permitted at the table, your date probably would prefer to confine all face fixing to the powder room, in which case you say... Will you excuse me, please? Sure. Your escort will take care of the check, leaving a tip for the waitress equal to perhaps 15% of the bill. He does not tip the hat check girl until you retrieve your coats. Then he may leave 15 cents or so for each coat. That's all there is to it, Linda. Easy, isn't it? It's all in knowing how. I'll get it. It's not so difficult, Mrs. Jefferson. I think practicing this way is a good idea. And Jerry, I enjoyed the dinner. Well, you're sure a big eater. Oh, hmm. The phone calls for you, Linda. Me? Thank you. Excuse me? Okay, sis, give me back my quarters. <laughs> Hello? Eddie, how did you know I was home? Oh, well, wherever you want to go is all right with me. Oh, golly, I'd love to go. I'll be ready. Goodbye. <laughs> 